Good evening, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with the Trumpet for My People. Today is March 2nd, 2019. And uh, this was last night uh, that the Lord showed me something amazing. Yes, it was the Lord. The Lord showed me something amazing. Some people get upset when I say that. The Lord showed me something. You know, that's pretty ridiculous that people get upset when I say something like that. I mean, number one, uh, I didn't get it on my own. I don't think there's way uh, a way I can just come to an understanding. That is a pretty amazing revelation, as many revelations that I have received. So I give credit where credit is due, right? The Lord showed me. And, uh, boy, tonight, this is an amazing revelation that I'm going to share with you. And it goes together with everything else that I've been sharing about March 22nd, the last day of Purim. Okay, there's a scripture in the Bible that says, After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up, that we may live in his sight. Now, this verse is only used... Or this phrase is only used once in the Bible. So uh, in and of itself, uh, the Bible says, In the mouth of two or three witnesses, every matter shall be established. And so standing in and of itself, um, it, we don't have a very strong case as to a day that we could watch based on the third day in and of itself. But there is another verse that goes with this that I'm going to share with you. Okay, we've got the third day, and then we've got what it says in John is the last day. Now, in John 6, now here's an important, uh, interesting detail and an important discovery is that the last day is more important than the third day in that the third day is only used once, whereas this phrase, the last day, I will raise you up on the last day, is used four times in John chapter 6. John 6, 39 says, And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all those he has given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. John 6, 40. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who beholds the Son and believes in him will have eternal life, and I myself will raise him up on the last day. Goes on in John 6, 44. Repeats the same phrase. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. John 6, 54. So here we have a conjunction or a very interesting detail about the third day. And then we have what is called the last day. So what I'm going to share with you is when the third day and the last day meet. When the third day and the last day meet. Then at the end of this, if you want to, you can argue about who showed this to me when I say, the Lord showed me an amazing revelation. Okay, now let's talk about God's appointed times. Passover is a seven-day feast. Within Passover, we have Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. We know there is a three-day uh, difference between Passover and first fruits that Jesus was crucified on Passover and 
was resurrected on first fruits. But first fruits was not the last day, nor is first fruits the last day ever of the week of Passover. So we do have a third day in the feast of Passover, but it's not the last day of the feast. Then we have the Feast of Weeks, Pentecost, which is a one-day feast. Then we have the Feast of Trumpets, which is really called the Day of Trumpets. It's a one-day feast. Then we have Yom Kippur, which is the Day of uh, Atonement. That's a one-day uh, one celebration or a one-day remembrance. And then we have the Feast of of tabernacles and within the feast of tabernacles there are seven days and the last uh, great day the eighth day of tabernacles but within this there is not a three-day feast so there are no three-day feasts within the original seven then we have Hanukkah Hanukkah is the eighth feast celebrated in December or in the middle of winter, whether it would be December or January. And this is an ordained feast that to the day the Jews continue to celebrate. And it was confirmed by Jesus Christ in John chapter 10, verses 22 through 23, that at the time of the Feast of the Dedication took place at Jerusalem, it was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So Jesus celebrated and recognized the Feast of Dedication, Hanukkah. Okay, that is the eighth feast. So up until now, we see that there are no three-day feasts, okay? So we don't really have a third day that can apply within any of the feasts. The only third day that could apply within any of the feasts is uh, first fruits, but first fruits is not the last day. Okay, so we don't have a conjunction anywhere of the third day and the last day. Uh, nor it, do we see any type of third third day uh, in the feast of Hanukkah. But then we have the ninth feast, the ninth feast that is written in the Bible is the Feast of Purim. Purim has been celebrated from the day of Esther to the present day. It is still celebrated. This is an ordained feast of the Lord. I will show you in the scripture how Purim is an appointed time. It is written in the scripture that Purim is an appointed time. Purim is a three day feast. This year, the first day of Purim is March 20th. The second day of Purim is March 21st. The third day of Purim is March 22nd. Purim is a three-day feast. In Esther chapter 9, in verse 17 and 18, it says, On the thirteenth day of the month, Adar, and on the fourteenth day of the same rested they and made it a day of feasting and gladness. But the Jews that were at Shushan assembled together on the thirteenth day thereof, and on the fourteenth thereof, and on the fifteenth day of the same, they rested and made it a day of feasting and gladness. So we see that in the twelfth month, the month of Adar, from the thirteenth day, the 14th day and the 15th day was the time that was celebrated for Purim. So we see three-day feast still celebrated today. This is taken from the Hebrew calendar. The Hebrew calendar, I think, is going to be our ultimate guide and key to everything we are expecting and watching for because this is the understanding of the blood moon tetrad comes from the Hebrew calendar, the connection on the Hebrew calendar 
to Passover Tabernacles, Passover Tabernacles on the Hebrew calendar, the Revelation 12 sign also conjoined with the Hebrew calendar to line up with the Feast of Trumpets, September 23rd, 2017, according to the Hebrew calendar. Okay, so we've established that Purim is a three-day feast. Adar 13, 14, and 15. This is written in the Bible. Now we're going to establish that this is an appointed time written in the Scriptures. Esther chapter 9. If we continue on, we will read in verse 27. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them so as it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time every year. Hello, this is the scripture of God. This is God's holy word. This is Esther chapter 9, verse 27. And it says that Purim is an appointed time every year. Okay. So that it should not fail that they would keep these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time every year year okay Purim three-day feast it's written in the word 13th 14th and 15th of Adar and it is written that Purim is an appointed time every year so what do we see We have a feast, the last feast of the year, that is Purim. It is a three-day feast. So we have the third day, would be the third day of the only three-day feast that exists within the calendar of God. And the third day is also the last day. The third day of Purim the last day of Purim. Now, we also can look at Purim and understand it is the last feast of the year. The third day of Purim is the last day of the last feast of the year, and it is the last feast in this year of Jubilee that we are seeing, we are coming to the end of the 6,000 years, 120 jubilees, 6,000 years, and we have the last feast, the last day of the last feast in the last jubilee. So my question is, is the third day and the last day conjoining together this year in Purim on Friday, March 22nd, 2019, the last day of Purim, the third day of Purim, and Look at how the last day of Purim, the third day of Purim, this year lines up exactly with what Jesus told us to watch for when we're looking for our flight. Pray that your flight be not in winter, neither on the Sabbath day. The second day of Purim is March 21st, the last day of winter. Then you have the last day of Purim, Friday, March 22nd, Shushan Purim. And then you have the Sabbath, 
the first Sabbath of spring. And right in between the Sabbath and the last day of winter, you have the third day of Purim, the last day of Purim, the last day of the last feast in the last Jubilee. So I will repeat again what I shared with you at the beginning of this message. The Lord showed me an amazing revelation last night. And I'm so excited to be able to share this with you. When the third day and the last day meet. Piram. March 22nd, 2019. I truly pray you are blessed tonight in the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. This is Steve Fletcher, a trumpet for my people, the sign of his coming revealed.